any other you know industry that uh, has a you know high security concerns. What are the security considerations around that? So we'll start with you, Joe, with the data center, and then Simon, and we'll move over to you. Yeah, so I, I th I'm hoping our, our answers are very complementary, right? So one is from our perspective, there's the physical security that the customer owns. They have to put the locks on the doors, right? But when you come into the world of security within SAP, we are, of course, a, a, a German headquartered company. We take this extremely seriously, GDPR and uh, data integrity and security. So having said that, we have an entire stack of security from every uh, aspect of data storage, data encryption, and then we have binding agreements for data trust and uh, data um, access. In general, as a general rule of thumb, you gotta uh, divide data into two streams. One is what we'll call payload data. It's the customer's data, their data of their business. The second is telemetry data. That telemetry data is, you know, is the fan in the computer spinning, is the disk drive full, you know? So it's kind of like data about the data. And that telemetry data is really what SAP accesses to make sure the environment's up and running. In those instances, in those instances, very, very rare occasion that our software would fail. Very, very rare. But if that, that was a joke, right? So if it, if it does fail, right, and we have to go to level two and level three support, we right. do what we can to obfuscate your data so that our support people can understand where the anomaly is and they can fix the code. Um, so from a security point of view, we do everything we can to basically separate ourselves from uh, the payload data and then to you know candidly put it in a digital lockbox to the best we can we also work with third parties who come in and audit our security practices and our security standards and we publish that as a report simon anything you want to anything that's different on your side uh, I don't know. I actually think it's very complementary to that because, again, it's all part of the the, the reference architecture itself, um, which which is really what SAP is is sort of trading on, right? Um, I, I think that the one piece I would add is, you know, within the hyperscaler world, because we do do a significant amount of work, um, you know, in the uh, regulated space and 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 certainly within the government. Uh, we, we have a wholly owned subsidiary within SAP called the SAP National Security Services. And it's in, and its entire being is actually leveraging, you know, AWS's Gov Cloud, Microsoft Azure's Government Cloud, those kind of things, as opposed to the standard version of those hyperscalers, because they are ITAR compliant, they are FedRAMP compliant. And, and so the, the, the message here on the hyperscaler front, I think, is th there are no there are no constraints as to how we can deliver against the security requirements. The question is, what are those specific security requirements that you need? Do you need, you know, only uh, US-based citizens accessing the data? Do you need, you know, does the data have to stay in North America or Europe or wherever you happen to be, right? The, the data sovereignty that Joe was talking about before, but I'm, I'm yet to come across a situation where we haven't been able to find a resolution to how SAP handles the data. Um, and largely that comes down to the fact that at its, at its most core principle, the customer itself controls the access to that data and to client zero, 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 no different than how it's controlled today with SAP support. So all of those customers who are SAP support customers today, it is exactly the same experience of allowing SAP to access your system in the cloud as it is to accessing your system in an on-premise environment today. And I think that's one of the biggest concerns that customers have is that something has changed. The, the reality is only the customer can grant SAP that access full stop. Yeah, that's spot on. 